So a key objective in when you're thinking about anesthesia in the context of neurosurgery is uh, to maintain the necessary cerebral blood flow to the patient's brain while enabling the neurosurgeons to get adequate surgical visualization on what they're operating on. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the physiology around all of this, and I'll take you back to cerebral blood flow. We know that that's, that's equal to the cerebral perfusion pressure divided by the cerebrovascular resistance. Now that cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to the mean arterial pressure uh, minus the intracranial pressure. That intracranial pressure is obviously related to what's inside the brain or the volume of what's inside the, the, the skull. So the brain, the CSF, the blood, and any space occupying lesion which might be present might be the reason why they're having neurosurgery in the first place. Uh, so normally this cerebral blood flow is tightly regulated. Uh, by an, by several factors, one of which is pressure auto uh, pressure auto regulation, which is muscles in the arterial walls contracting or dilating to sort of even out the blood flow. CO2, which is an important one. So in in high CO2 blood, that's kind of a sign that the tissue is metabolically active, and so there's vasodilation to get fresh oxygenated blood in. Opposite is also true. Uh, in low CO2 blood, that's kind of evidence that there isn't a lot of metabolic activity, so there's no rush to get uh, fresh oxygenated blood in, so there's vasoconstriction and, and decreased cerebral blood flow. And cerebral metabolism is the, regu the regulating factor behind this. As well, there's neurogenic regulation, which is related to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. So from an anesthetic perspective, what can we do to kind of manage this and, and go after this objective? Well, we can decrease the volume of the brain by giving mannitol, which is going to, which is a, a hyperosmotic fluid, and that's going to suck out all of the the water from the cells in the brain. Not not too much, so the, but but enough that it'll kind of shrink up the brain tissue. We won't get a lot of swelling. We can hyperventilate the patient, lower their CO2, so they're going to get uh, vasoconstriction to the blood vessels in the vein. To the blood vessels in the brain and as well we can position them head up so that gravity is working in our favor as well and that'll help drain all the blood out of the brain and, and lower our cerebral blood flow.